Jesus Christ in which we serve. You see, Jesus' main purpose really, really was to reconcile us with God, you know. But before reconciling us with God, He broke down the boundaries that divides us. He broke down the boundaries in our lives. You remember the story about the, the ten leopard? You remember that story? Yes. What, what it says? All of them was down in leopard land together. And all of them cried out with the same voice to Jesus. I want to be healed. And all of them, he sent all of them to see the priest. And when all of them was going up so, they realized that they were healed. And all of a sudden, the Samaritans say, wait boy, I can't go to the Jews, boy. I don't go back so. Because I am not allowed to show myself to them priests. Because I'm not one of them. I wouldn't feel welcome. And turn back to the source of his healing and receive spiritual healing. That's just breaking down boundaries. That's what we call breaking down boundaries. Sometimes we create boundaries on one side, but Christ is breaking down boundaries on another side. With our practices, our attitude, and our whole movement, people just don't want to be around you. People just don't want to be around you. That is not the work of a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's not the work of a disciple. And therefore, when we have boundaries, when we have walls, it is a sin against God. It interrupts our relationship with God, and it interrupts other people's relationship with God. So I'm saying, therefore, that Jesus came to reconcile us with God and he broke down the boundaries that divides us. Therefore, allow us to take this opportunity to run to Jesus. Hold on to his garment. Do not let go. And also, draw others to go with you so that they themselves will experience the beauty of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I said to you earlier, when you focus on prosperity, you cannot see that. All you will see is a bargaining process. All you will see is the opportunity where when another set of money will come. What I have to give. And if I don't have any, I don't go to church. I have no money to give. That doesn't justify them dollars always be given away. Don't care for me. And so I like that one. And so I like the dollars, boy. It have a way that's holding the hand and crimp it so. And they put the hand straight down to the bottom of the basket. I ain't sure you put the, you know, take it out. But the point to this is that Sometimes it comes from the heart, really. It comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. Right? But still, be careful. We have to do better than that sometimes. So my brothers and sisters, as we continue to reflect, brothers and sisters, we are called to understand the role and function we have as Christians. The task that which is at hand for us. If we don't disciple others, how do we expect people to come to God? Take a moment and reflect on that. If we don't disciple others, how do we expect people to come to God? If you don't live a life worthy of exemplifying, how do we expect people to come to God? In the tongue, people talk bad about Christians so much that you're ashamed to tell people that you are Christian too. You ever heard that before? You're ashamed. Because we are not living the way that Christ asks us to live. We are not good exemplifiers of Christ. And therefore, people are resisting us because of that. And the whole Christian community, not us here, we don't behave so. And I'm not telling you to check yourself as people within our community. Our nation needs us. Our nation focuses only on prosperity. The center of our nation right now is who could get rich faster than who. Who could wear the most gold? Who could have the most money? Who could have the biggest house and the biggest car? That is the focus of many people in our nation today. And I'm saying, therefore, when we live a life that's worth exemplifying, they will see. That there is beauty in serving Christ and serving Him with a faithful and a true heart. Draw them out. You need to draw people to God with the way that you live. We cannot stand in the church, in our homes, and belt out prayer from Genesis to Revelation. And when time to go outside there, we afraid to speak out. We have to speak out. We have to be representation and we have to be careful in being like the, the gospel of Matthew. You know, you, you, they want to be seen and heard. We ain't talking about that. But our whole life living, when we live the gospel, people see the gospel. Something about you I love. Something about you I want to know. Because you are living a particular life in which I envy. I want to know you. And with that, you can introduce them to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And when we do this, my brothers and sisters, you realize that prosperity is not the center of our life no more. But we may talk about a different prosperity, the prosperity of health and comfort and spirituality the prosperity of greatness 
The prosperity of having an encounter with Jesus. The prosperity of testimonies. The, tes the, 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 the testimony of great things in which you have peace in the eyes of God. And that is what we as Christians are called to strive for. So as we continue to go therefore into the world and be the light of Christ, be a living testimony of God's love and God's grace. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.